Alright guys, uh, this is a same cell, different wiring configuration, um, just to show you some differences in what happens when you start to change the wiring. What I've done is I've made the outside plates positive and the middle plate negative. So basically what I have here is two series stacks of cells. The cell is technically defined as any space between two electrodes, like that space right there, um, that has a potential difference or polarity difference. So when you stack plates with neutrals, you're actually creating a series of cells, and technically I, I prefer to call it a stack, because um, it's a stack of cells. Let's go ahead and turn the meters on. I'll show you what it does, I'll show you the data. Okay, plugged in, got the lead off. I store my cell, as you can see, shorted out to discharge the uh, polarity over time, even sitting um, after you run it. It tends to charge the water and uh, get less and less efficient the longer that it sits. Let's go ahead and hook this one up. Alright, turn it on. Now, the uh, other configuration, it started to draw power at around, what was it, uh, high 20s that it would stay stable. This one, you can see it reacts almost immediately. Okay, 11, amp, or 11 volts, and it started to kick. 13 volts. From about there on, it'll at least draw a little higher. There, it stays stable at about 16 volts. Again, since the uh, amperage is very low, 0.1 amp, the production is almost non existent, or at least you can't see it from the outside of the cell. So let's turn it up. Okay, we're at, let's rock back down a couple, couple amps, and then you can start to see production again. Um, my most efficient run was, yes, I do run this stuff on a spreadsheet, but I didn't show it before. Most efficient run. Uh, 4.918 is at 20 volts 1.4 amps and uh, took 3 minutes 3.7 minutes to produce 515 milliliters yes very low production um, all things considered but there's remedies for that and we'll get into that shortly over time but I just want to go through this very slowly and bring everybody up to speed so you can see all the voltages that I ran and you can see the corresponding efficiencies and you will see a, a bell curve um, however when you get to the low voltage condition the bell curve drops off more steeply than too high of a voltage so it's one of the things that has been noticed so I ran it up to 25 volts and uh, it's drawn about four and a half amps. Let's crank it up over here. Get up to like, I don't know, five, six amps. Show you guys what that looks like. Seven amps, that's pretty good. And there we go. Both sides. So it starts pumping pretty good. Um, it's still connected to the test rig. Although, yeah, it's still... Let's uh, give this a go. I'll show you what it does. Sorry if I'm a little shaky. I had a... Uh, what? 14 hour work day today, so my arms are kind of tired. 
does take a little bit of work to finance some of this stuff. pumping out <clears throat> and you can see it coming out of there pretty good I know the resolution will go down when I uh, process this video but hopefully I'll get it close enough to where you guys can see now at this voltage I'm slightly over driving the cell and you'll notice that the water starts to foam a bit um, most people have noticed this you can see it a little bit better here. You can see the fine particulate foam. Another thing I like about this bubbler is, or this uh, fluid gas separator, since it drops the liquid into an airspace, um, the bubbles can freely fall out of the liquid um, without having to float up and coalesce and fight gravity. They're dropped onto the surface so that the impact kind of shakes them out. And when you look at the bottom, what you get is very clear liquid. So it doesn't recirculate the foam, which is a nice feature. But we're still going back and forth, <coughs> excuse me, as far as uh, uh, designs on fluid gas separators and things like that. We'll get it cranked down and, and figured out soon enough part of the R&D. There's that. You can kind of see it jettisoning, jettisoning out pretty good rate. And this is running at 28.7 volts at the supply, 27 even at the cell, and you know 6.1 and some change. It varies a little bit because the water level fluctuates slightly, but about 6.18 I would say for an average, maybe a little higher than that. So that's uh, that test rig. I will be reconfiguring it and doing another video, um, and continuing to do that throughout until I get this thoroughly tested, uh, seeing if any other configurations yield a better uh, output. Um, a lot of people have asked me why I'm choosing not to go with a standardized voltage like 12 or 14 things for automotive applications. Well, it'll get there. Um, I just want to see what it does through a voltage range. Um, if you have 12 volts at, at a good supply of amps, you can make whatever voltage you want. If I were to find that for whatever particular reason it ran more efficiently at a specific voltage, then I would uh, target that voltage and go for it. So. But uh, I'll keep reconfiguring it down to the acceptable voltages, and uh, we'll see how it runs. So take it easy. We'll talk to you later.